Oh. Or a spotlight like that, like, or we'll get into the water. Uh, welcome everyone. Okay, that took a little bit because we have a good turnout. Welcome everyone. We have 75 people right now. We had 300 who registered, so we'll, um, I'm sure they'll be joining a, a bit. Well, my name is Adriana Mendoza. I am Associate Director uh, here at AARP for Advocacy and Community Engagement. And on behalf of AARP California, I want to welcome you all to our last cooking demonstration of the year. I can't believe it's already December and we are hosting this event that I, I know you're going to really enjoy. Uh, it's, it's, it's got the festive flavor. Um, and of course, we're inviting back um, Maite, who has joined us. Um, this is the third event of the year. Um, so again, welcome. Um, and our hope that is that by the end of today's program, you'll feel inspired and want to learn more about uh, the rich Latino heritage and, and the culinary arts, which is why we're here today. And again, today's speaker will be um, talking to us about one of our passion points, which is fruit, uh, food, and uh, fruit too, but food. Uh, we'll also highlight the contributions of Latinos in the culinary arts. And um, I just want to know where folks are joining us from. If you can use that chat feature and let us know, please, where you're joining us from. Um, it'd be, okay, Lancaster, Monterey Bay, San Clemente, LA. Wow, truly statewide. Al Alameda, San Diego, Harbor City, Claremont, West. Sacramento, all over Manhattan Beach. Welcome you all. This is great. Rancho, Palo Verde, Livermore, up north. See my feather coming from all over. <laughs> That's amazing. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so good to see everyone from all around California. And again, for today's program, we're really pleased to have uh, Chef Maite Gomez Rejon. Um, and I, I see some familiar names and I know some of you are joining us uh, again. And, and for those of you who are joining for the first time, I know and I trust that you're gonna enjoy Maite and her style and just the the, the way she does these cooking demonstrations. It's, it's just, um, I'll let you see and, and enjoy. Uh, Maite has dedicated her entire career to exploring the nexus of art and culinary history through lectures, cooking classes, and tastings uh, presented, she's presented in museums um, and universities all across the country and through her videos on her art bites, cooking art history. Uh, Maite, many credentials. She has a bachelor's of arts um, from the University of Texas at Austin and a uh, master's in fine arts from the School of Art Institute of Chicago and, grand, and a grand diploma uh, from the French Culinary Institute's, uh, Institute in New York City. She's been featured um, as a guest on the Today Show, featured in Food and Wine magazine, and um, a bunch of other great credentials. So please Google her. She's fantastic. Um, but I don't want to take more time because um, I just want to turn it over to her. And we do. I do have my colleague here, Priscilla, who is going to be... Um, uh, making sure that your questions are answered and feel free, free to please use the chat for any questions about uh, anything. <laughs> it's great, great uh, to have you, Priscilla. And please take it over, Maite. Gracias. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you. And thank you all so much for, for joining. I see that we have somebody joining from Mazatlan as well. I wish I was there on the beach. That's amazing. Um, but yes, yeah, thank you. And for those of you that are here for the first time taking a, a class with me, welcome. And for those of you that have joined um, to some of the previous programs, welcome back. Uh, thank you so much. And I, I this is my last um, event of the of the year. I can't believe Christmas is next week. It's 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 insane. But um 
I couldn't think of a better way to to end the year than by baking, to making some some holiday cookies. So today, I um I don't know if everybody received um the recipes that I'm gonna be making today. I'm just gonna drag them into the um into the chat. Um, hopefully you'll see them so that you can make these at home. Um, so making two of my favorite recipes, super simple recipes um, that you can make to, to serve over the holidays, to gift, um, or to just whatever, whatever you want to do with them. We eat them yourselves. Um, so uh, two recipes, one of them are polvorones, which are also known as Mexican wedding cookies. I'm Mexican. I've never been to a Mexican wedding that has Mexican wedding cookies. In Mexico, they're called polvorones. Um, that comes from the word polvo, which means either dust or, or powder. So they're, you know, the white little cookies um, that look like little snowballs. So I think they're the perfect Christmas cookies, holiday cookies. And then we're also gonna make bird's nests or thumbprint cookies. Um, and the, both the recipes are my mom's recipes, the thumbprint cookie or, or um, the bird's nest recipe that we're making is a recipe that my uh, mom tasted when she was like 10 years old. And she loved it. Somebody had gifted it to my grandparents and she loved it so much that she asked the woman that had, you know, made these cookies for the recipe. And the woman was, she found it so endearing that a little girl would ask for a recipe. So this is from that recipe. Um, again, really, really simple. Um, before I start, I'm just gonna preheat my oven to 350. I forgot to do that before. Um, and before I start cooking, I just want to share just a little bit, just a couple, a, a few nuggets of history. Again, both of these cookies are very simple, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask um, in the chat. Um, so when we think of, you know, Mexican cookies or Mexican sort of pastries, we typically think of pan dulce, right? Like conchas, and there's so many different sweet breads in Mexico. But also these two cookies are very much, we, we see them a lot in Mexico, especially these um, polvorones, and sometimes they have cinnamon, um, but it's typically butter, sugar, um, and flour, and nuts, right? So, and this concept of a baking, um, is something that appeared in Mexico post-conquest. Wheat um, was introduced into Mexico in the 16th century, and it quickly became part of, um, you know, the, this baking tradition, you know, eventually emerged. And by the 19th century, there were bakeries all over Mexico, um, mostly owned by Italian or French people. Of course, the French have had a baking tradition for, you know, centuries and centuries. Um, but these little wedding cookies, sometimes they're little circles, but sometimes they're little crescent moons. These were the favorite cookie of Maximilian, who was emperor in Mexico for just a few short years. So he introduced these polvorones, these wedding cookies into Mexico. Um, in Austria, he was Austrian. They were known as vanille kefir. There were these little crescent moons. And these particular types of cookies with nuts and sugar and butter were developed in the, in you know, during the Middle Ages by medieval Arabs. And those were introduced into Europe um, and they came to Mexico via Spain. And again, by the 19th century, they were very popular. They're also known in the US as Russian tea cakes. And apparently during the Cold War, um, when there was a little friction between the US and Russia, the Russian tea cake was dropped and they became pecan sandies or Mexican wedding cookies. So it's basically the same thing, just with different names. Um, so I'm going to start making these cookies. I'm just gonna shift over to the other side of the kitchen. And again, they're quite simple and I'm just gonna walk through them step by step. And if you have any questions, please, please um, let me know. Um, so they have, so they're made with nuts, typically pecans in Mexico, you know, uh, pecans are native to the Americas, but we usually see them with pecan, hence pecan sandies. Um, sometimes they're made with almonds. Um, sometimes they're made with walnuts. I actually had some um, hazelnuts. And so I'm gonna make them with hazelnuts. I've never made them with hazelnuts before, but I'm actually quite excited 
So what you want to do is take um, your nuts. This is about a little over a cup of nuts. Um, actually, it's one cup of nuts um, that I just stuck in the food processor to where they're pretty finely ground, not super fine. They have a little bit of crunch to them, um, but if you can sort of see them. If I've made it before with um, almond flour, which is very finely ground, and I find that it's just too dry a cookie. So I like a little bit of texture and uh, just a, a little bit of texture in them. But this is essentially a shortbread cookie, which is a cookie that has flour, sugar, and butter. There are no eggs. There's no leavening agent. It's basically just those three ingredients. Um, and what I'm going to do is I have two um, sticks of butter um, room temperature, they've been, it's been sitting out for a couple of hours. Um, so two sticks of butter that I'm going to put right here in my, um, in my mixer. And so I have two sticks of butter and I'm going to add half a cup of powdered sugar, right? So again, this is the simplest half a cup of powdered sugar and all I'm gonna do is mix it until it's really light and fluffy. So just for about 15 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe a little bit longer. I just wanna make sure, can everybody hear me okay over the, yeah. Um, you just wanna make sure that it's really sort of nice and fluffy. I'm gonna bring my, um, my phone over so that you can see you make this at home, or rather, when you make this, um, so that you can see what you're, what you want to, what you, what you're looking for. I'm just gonna flip this over, and so there's an idea. See how it's, it's actually very, very creamy. Let me just get a spatula and push some of this down. You, the key here is to start with room temperature butter because you don't want any, you know, you don't want any uh, chunks in it. And you want it to make sure that everything that it that it you can make it really really smooth. Like that. Um, sorry, I'm not sure if you answered this question. Um, C. Yi is asking if you're able to make these gluten free. Um, yes, actually, absolutely. All you need to do is just buy. There's a, a particular flour. I, be, I believe the brand is one to one, and I think maybe is it. I think maybe Trader Joe's makes um, a cup for cup for cup. Oh, hey Rita, yeah, cup for cup. I, I said one for one, but I meant yeah, cup for cup. Um, so if you do something like that, you could follow the recipe um, exactly the recipe that I'm doing and just substitute. Just thank use you. the gluten free flour. Yeah, thank you for that. I didn't. I didn't see the. Um, I didn't see that question. Thanks, Mike. Then we also have another question, and I'm actually with Patricia. I don't have a KitchenAid, and um, the question is, are you able to use a hand mixer? I do have a hand mixer, so it's a great question. Absolutely, 100%. Use a hand mixer. I've actually even made this, as long as your butter is room temperature, you could just use a spatula, like a really sturdy spatula, maybe something a little bit more than this, or a wooden spoon, and it's going to, you know, you'll, you'll get a little workout out of it. So if you don't have a standing mixer, don't worry, hand mixer, or you could even do it by hand. Not a big deal. Thank you. Of course, of course. Um, so I'm just going to flip this over again so that you could see. Um, and please keep the keep the keep the questions coming. Um, so it's pretty nice and fluffy. So I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And this is homemade vanilla extract. I'll talk about this extract in a minute. Um, how to make homemade vanilla extract. It's the easiest thing and the most incredible, incredible thing. So I'm just going to mix them. And then I'm going to add my nuts. So again, I have my one cup of ground um, hazelnuts. I'm using hazelnuts today. And then just mix that. <laughs> And the next thing I'm going to do is add two and a half cups of flour. 
So super, super simple. These cookies are my favorite. Actually, both of these cookies are my favorite. Um, and what I want to do, I'm going to add the flour. I typically like to add the flour in by hand because um, these tend to be a little bit dry, hence the name polvoron, you know, meaning powder or dust. And since I'm using flour, or I'm using all-purpose flour, you probably won't have this problem if you're using gluten-free flour. But if you mix the flour too much, it's going to get really, really tough. So I'm going to add my flour by hand. Wait, let me see. Can everybody see? It's okay. It's a weird angle, but there you go. So I have two and a half cups of flour. So I'm going to add it in maybe thirds. And then just sort of mix it in there. Eventually, I'm going to stick my hands in here. So it's a pretty dry, um, a pretty dry uh, dough. Does anybody have any questions while I do this? Or anybody, does what, or do you, does everybody make these cookies? Do you like these cookies? Have you ever, um, would love to hear any, any, any thoughts on these cookies? My dad, Carmen shared that these were always at of her Tia Connie's family Christmas Eve. I know, Matt, that's so nice. I love that. Yeah, these are definitely, they were a favorite in my family. Uh, always such a favorite in my family as well. And my dad, I'm not sure if it, it may be just me. Um, the image is a little pixelated. I'm wondering if you're able to... Um, move your phone so that more of the bowl, we could see more of the bowl and maybe that'll help the clarity. Okay. It could just be my computer, but. Does that look a little bit better? It's still a little pixelated, but I think it helps to see. Um, oh, you're right. It is from a, a further distance. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know why, but maybe that's a little bit better. I think that helps. Okay. And um, you have another question. Um, can any other type of nut be used? Absolutely. These are typically made with pecans. Um, I'm using, um, I'm going to stick my hands in there now. I'm using hazelnuts. I've never made them with hazelnuts before, but I had actually just exactly a cup of hazelnuts and I thought, oh, I'm going to try it. Um, I've made these with walnuts. I've made these with almonds. Um, you could use any, any nut that you want, but traditionally, um, it's either it's in, in Mexico, um, they're made with pecans, but okay. whatever you like, whatever you have, um, absolutely. And I did hear you mention almonds. Um, we have a question from Maria. If using almonds, is it best, um, to use blanched almonds or skins on? You know, I, I've made them with blanched, I've made them with almond flour. I think the almond flour is a little too fine. Um, I like to have a little bit of bite to it, um, but I prefer using toasted almonds. It's gonna give it a little bit more flavor. And as far as with the skin or without the skin, um, if you basically, the difference is if you use it, if you get the almonds with the skin, it's just going to have a little bit more color. Like you can see here, I did not peel my hazelnuts. So it's just going to have a little bit more color. Um, they're going to look more like the little snowballs, but I would say that's entirely, that's entirely up to you. Okay. And then another question as you're mixing the dough with the nuts, um, have you, and this comes from Deborah. Have you ever mixed the dough and then rolled in the nuts instead of mixing in the dough? Um, that's what I'm going to do with the other cookies. But this particular cookie has the dough, um, has the nuts in the dough. Okay. Yeah. That I mean, you could do that, but that would be another, that would be, you know, a different cookie. I don't know why I'm having a little bit of trouble with the, okay, there you go. 
Um, yes, that would be a different cookie. And that's basically what I'm going to do with the other recipes. So I wanted to do two nut recipes. You could use the same nut. Um, I'm going to roll it in. But this is the type of cookie. You're basically, I'm just doing little uniform uh, little balls. Um, so I want it. These are, these are what's called a drop cookie um, that you could either, their drop cookies are, you could either take a spoonful and just sort of flop it onto the sheet pan or you can shape them. Um, so you have control that you can make them all exactly the same size. Um, so actually this is not exactly the same size. So, and that way you're gonna cook them all evenly. So these, um, I like to make little circles. Um, sometimes they're like little crescent moons, uh, whatever you whatever you prefer. Um, I have a cousin who makes these with cinnamon and they're amazing. And I asked her for the recipe and she usually responds right away to all of my WhatsApps and she didn't respond. I was so upset. She didn't want to share her recipe, I think. Um, Might be a secret recipe. <laughs> I know. I, was like, I called my mom. I was like, no, I didn't share her recipe. It's like, oh, oh well. Um, uh, Maite, we have an interesting um, comment from Patricia who shared that she grew up calling these Russian tea cakes. Um, yeah. so it's like they might go by, um, the cookies polvorones might go by different names. They do. They go by different names. Um, and there was, there's a legend that the, the Russian part of the name was sort of dropped. I mean, they're still referred to Russian tea cakes uh, sometimes, but the they were started to be called Mexican wedding cookies in the 1950s or during the Cold War because there was some you know friction between the U.S. and and um, and Russia, so the Russian part of the name was dropped. But who knows? That could be you know speculation. But yes, they go by uh, so many different names: Russian tea cakes. There's um, pecan sandies, um, pan de polvo. Mexican wedding cookies, polvorones, like they have so many, they go by a lot of different names. Thank it's you, cool. Maite, for that tidbit of history with the name. Yeah. Um, we have more questions coming in. This one's from Janet, who is asking how big of a ball of dough? Um, would you say it's like a tablespoon or maybe a little larger? They're about, I would say like a like a one inch. Okay. A one they inch. Really big in my, they look really big on the on the screen, but so here's to give you a sense, this is the tablespoon. So yeah, exactly, it's like a tablespoon. And so, then um, we do have a request from Dory, if you can demonstrate how to make a crescent shape. Okay. Be able to do one as a crescent? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I might just, I still have quite a bit of uh, dough left, but I wanna um, be mindful of everybody's time and I'm gonna, um, move over to the other to the other recipe and just put what I have in the oven. So actually, this is a little bit big. It's basically like a, like a croissant, like a little baby moon, like a little half moon, just like that. I'll make a couple more. Um, so then these. They're gonna bake only for about 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. Um, and then once they're cool enough to handle, you run them through powdered sugar. And that's what gives them their, their beautiful you know, color. And powder, the powdery texture, but also the powdery, um, literal powder. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven. Um, the oven is at 350. And then I'm going to move on to my bird's nest. So. Michael, about. I am so impressed with um, how fast you are making these. I'm sure once I try at home, it'll probably take me twice the time. But no, so fun so to see that you are, you know, making these so quickly. It's a very, very simple, very, very simple recipe. Very simple recipe. The most time consuming thing is just gathering your ingredients, but that's it. Look, look at that, it's so simple. I'm just gonna 
give my hands a quick rinse and I'm gonna stick these in the oven and, um, and then I'll move on to the other recipe. But let me just see, wanna see if anybody has any other comments or questions before I stick these in the oven. It looks like we've gone over all, um, let's see. I, I I did miss a comment by Karen who said she's made these with whole wheat flour and almond flour. Oh, nice, whole um, wheat flour. That's interesting. So it has a little bit more, um, a little bit more bite to it, right? Like a little bit more oomph to it. Well, that sounds, sounds like it would be interesting. So here's what I have. So I have eight, 12 little balls and then four of the little crescent moons. I'm gonna stick them in the oven for about, I'm gonna check them at 10 minutes, but probably actually 15 minutes because they're a little bit, they're not super tiny. So I'm just gonna stick them in the oven and I will be right back. And let's see. All right, I'm gonna tell Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. The A L E X A. All right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. Um, and then, Mike, there, can you can you reshare um, to what? Um, how hot should the oven? 350. 350. Yeah, 350 degrees. Yeah. So okay, so I'm just gonna clean up my mess a little bit here, and then move on to the to the bird's nest cookies, which are also so um so simple um and some of my favorite cookies i say i have a, a major sweet tooth and i love these cookies so i have all of my ingredients i'm gonna put my powdered sugar for the wedding cookies um on this side of the kitchen and i'm just gonna bring everything else that i need here i have another one of these um so similar ingredients but this particular recipe does take um eggs um so i also have it's also 350 degree oven. I have two sticks of butter. I have about a cup and a quarter of ground pecans. I did use pecans for this. Also, you could use any nut that you want. I don't know if I would use almonds. Um, I would like something more with a little bit of color. So I, I like to use pecans for this. Um, eggs. And flour have everything up on my little counter here, um, and brown sugar. So the other one had powdered sugar. This particular recipe has brown sugar. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to separate my eggs um, because what I'm going to do is there was a question before if you could put these other cookies, do the flour after, do the nuts afterwards. That's what I'm going to do here. But first, you actually have to shape the cookie and then pass it through egg whites so that the nuts can stick to the to the dough. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is just separate the nuts. I'm sorry, not the nuts, the, the yolk from the whites. Um, and this cookie the, the um, is sort of we're not really sure like where these cookies came from. They could be um, Swedish. Um, they so Eastern European, so there's sort of a mystery as to you know where these where these cookies um, originated from. But they are also a very very popular um, cookie. They're also known as thumbprint cookies. So they basically they cook for a few minutes, take them out of the oven, you press it down with your thumb or with your the back of a spoon, and then you fill them with your favorite uh, jam. Um, so let me just. My we have a question from Irene. What do you use to buy, what do you use to grind the nuts or do you already purchase them that way? You can purchase them already. I um, just took them in a, a little mini food processor that I have that I love. So you could do that. You could chop them, coarsely chop them by hand. You can stick them in a blender. It, it's really, yeah, you could do it, you know, different, different way. Thank you. So this um, egg white, I'm gonna put it on the other side of the kitchen. I'm gonna beat it a little bit more um, when when I'm ready for that. Um, so what now? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my butter. It's very much similar process to the other cookie, um, which I love. I, I really love that, that there's so many cookies that are basically have the same process, um, but you could do so many different things with. Right? 
So let me just clean my the um the paddle attachment that I was using for the other cookie. Um, so it's sort of amazing that it's like, oh yeah, there are totally different types of cookies. Both have nuts, both have eggs, both have flour, but they're gonna taste completely different. And I love that, how you basically take one um, technique and apply it to so many different, so many different things. Um, so here is my clean paddle. I have my two cups, I'm sorry, my two sticks of sugar, of butter, and I've separated my, um, my eggs. And I'm going to add half a cup of brown sugar and then just mix that until it's really nice and creamy. Just like we did before. Um, and then I'm gonna add my egg, two egg um, yolks. I'm gonna add the eggs just, you know, one at a time. Just so that it's all mixed together. Martha, we have another question. Um, can you um, go over how, well, what's the best way to store the cookies? Oh, you could just put them, you can cover them. Uh, you want to cover them. You can put them in a Tupperware. Um, you just, you know, because if you leave them out, they're going to dry out. So if you put them in a Tupperware, that would be totally fine. Let me flip over so that you can see. My dad? Yeah, I, I disappeared. I don't know why this isn't um, showing up. Let me see. There you go. Uh, yeah. And so while that's taking place, um, Patricia is asking something that I was also wondering. Um, can you freeze them? Ah, I've never frozen them, actually. Um, that's a good question. I would maybe freeze the dough um, instead of freezing the cookies. I feel like that might be better, and then and then stick shape them and then cook them at the you know. Gosh, I don't know. Does anybody anybody who oh somebody said Kathy said that they freeze beautifully. Um, Kathy, would you freeze them already cooked or would you freeze them them raw? Anybody? I'm wondering. Kathy did share cooked, so it looks oh, like okay. that's an option. That's an interesting idea, yeah. So that is absolutely, so I'm adding my eggs. So I have my brown sugar, my flour, I'm adding my two egg yolks in there. And I'm just gonna mix that. I have a quarter teaspoon of salt. <laughs> and one teaspoon of vanilla. And now I'm going to add um, two cups of flour. My th and the flour, is that all-purpose flour? Does it matter what type of flour? Good question. Yes, all-purpose flour. Uh, I'm sure you could do whole wheat flour, like somebody uh, made the polvorones with the whole wheat flours. Um, but yes, I'm just using regular all-purpose flour. And as soon as it forms the dough, I will start making my cookies. Right then, and you've mentioned this, um, the basic ingredients um, of, um, I think, making your own, van van is it vanilla? Linda's asking earlier yeah. that you can make your own vanilla. So if you could share again. 
I will. I'm going to share. Let me just get these shaped in the oven, and then um, and then I'm going to share making the oven vanilla because there's nothing like it. But yes, I absolutely will, and I promise I will not forget. Um, I just want to get these shaped and in the oven. So let me just show you the um, the batter. The dough. So it came together really beautifully. Um, this is a really really nice dough. Um, and then these, I'm just going to shape them. I have my my um, my pecans, but I'm not doing anything with my pecans yet. Oh, I can smell my cookies already. All right, so these little guys, I'm going to do about half an inch. So I want them a little bit smaller. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, and this dough is much um, just softer, much creamier. There's egg in it, um, about the same amount of, um, of flour and everything else. It just, there's egg in it, so it's a little bit, I don't know, softer, more pliable. So I'm going to stick these in the oven for about eight minutes, um, and then we're going to squish them. Oh wait, sorry. No, not yet. We are gonna, we are gonna, um, I'm gonna shape the little balls and then I'm gonna roll them in the egg white and then in the butter, in the nuts. So let me just do a few more. And then I'll talk about vanilla extract. So um, I love making my own vanilla extract. It is, um, much more economical is one thing than buying them at the store because you know vanilla is so it, it, it's it's native to Mexico um, but most vanilla today comes from uh, Tahiti or Madagascar actually mo mostly Madagascar it's um, just a few degrees north or south of the equator um, and it's very fickle I mean if there is a hurricane if there's you know it's being affected tremendously by climate change. So if all of a sudden you go to the store and your little container of, of, of vanilla that you always buy is suddenly $20, that means that it was a really bad season, bad harvest. Um, but if you buy vanilla beans, you can buy them. There, there's a place, a um, couple of places. I, I, I like to buy Mexican vanilla just because it's vanilla is native to Mexico and just to support the vanilla industry, which is, you know, dying basically. Um, there's a company called Voladores and I can share the link um, in a second once my hands are, are out of the are, out of the dough. Um, and then you just stick your vanilla beans in vodka and then just kind of forget about it for a year if you can, or six months to a year. Um, and I'll show you for in a second. So I have my my little balls here. I'm just gonna come back over to this side of the kitchen. And I'm gonna see, make sure that everybody can can see what I'm doing. So this is the I'm gonna run the other sugar, the other cookies in through in the powdered sugar. So I just want to make sure I don't get it mixed up. Um, and then here I have my two eggs white but I'm just beating it a little bit nothing you know nothing nothing major and actually I'm going to move these over here uh, like that uh we have a question from Janet have you ever tried adding lemon zest to the polvorones oh no but that would be really delicious I love that idea I will now that does sound delicious um, so I have my eggs and I have my nuts right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass the, I'm going to use one hand to put the, um, the cookie, the, the dough in the eggs and another hand to put in here. So doing just so that I don't get my hands completely messy. Uh, can everybody see? So I'm just going to. We can see my thing. You can see. Okay. Should I? Would it be helpful to so that I put the other phone over so that you could see my hands? Oh, yeah. Or maybe yeah, okay. put the bowl. Um, okay. Let me just see that. Let me bring my phone over. 
so that everybody can see. Okay, I think this would be helpful. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this a little further. All right, um, so something like this. So there are the, the dough in here and the eggs and then in the, in the nuts. So just wanna mix this in the nuts and that's it. Just make sure that they're really nicely covered in the egg so that the nuts stick to them really well, really easily. And that's it. Super simple. Has anybody ever made these cookies or has anybody, this, this, this had a little bit too much egg, so I'm just setting this aside. Um, does anybody make these? Is this, is this a favorite? The, are these cookies a favorite for anybody um, here today? I'm wondering. Are you, have you started baking, getting ready for, for the holidays? Soon, I guess it, it, basically holidays are here. Oh, okay, so that's my cookie. Let me just put those, pull those out of the oven. Let that stop. And I'm gonna continue doing this, but I'm gonna make sure that these guys are ready. And I'm gonna leave them in there for about, just I'm gonna finish this and I'm gonna pull those out. So I think they need a, a little bit more time. Um, so I'll just get these in there. And I think, Evelia, Evelia, if I'm mispronouncing your name, I apologize, um, is sharing that this is a new recipe for them and um, they are excited to try them out. Ah, uh, hey, Amelia, you're gonna love them. You're gonna love them. They're so, they're so good. Okay. Carmen shared that um, she made them a long time ago and she thinks that they were called jam thumbprints. Thumbprints, um, yes. From the Betty Crocker recipe. Oh, Betty Crocker, good old Betty Crocker. Yes, they're definitely, they're called thumbprints because you basically just stick your thumb in there. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna- I'm And gonna... Janet is um, sharing that it's a good way to use um, her homemade jam. That sounds delicious. Oh, that does sound delicious. Do you make jam in the summer and then, um, and then can make preserves? Yep, she says yes. Uh, that's the best. I've always wanted to, to do that, to be that person, but- yeah, I, I love that. I would love to. I would love to do. That. Okay, Irene so. shared something very sweet that her mom used to make them. So this mm -hmm. reminds me. Yeah, of her mom. These definitely remind me of my mom. She makes these. This is the recipe that she asked. You know, this this woman when she was a child that she asked for the recipe, and it it's some it's so endearing. Okay, so here are. Our, 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 our cookies. So I'm just going to wash my hands and I'm going to stick these in the oven. And I'm going to take the other ones out. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna move all of this out of the way for now. And as you see, I have um, my two jams. I have a strawberry jam and I have some apricot jam here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up, oh, hold on, let me set the timer. Alexa, set a timer for eight minutes. Um, so I'm going to take the thumbprint cookies out um, and then basically make a little thumbprint. Um, you don't wanna cook them too much. You wanna make sure that the that the dough is still very soft and, and still raw so that you can squish them down and they don't break. Stick them back in the oven just to make sure that they finish cooking and then come out and when they're cool enough, you, you fill them with the jam. 
Um, now these guys, these um, sugar cookies, the polvorones, um, when they're cool enough, you can move this over. Um, I don't want them to break, but okay. So what I'm going to do with these little guys is I'm just going to wait a little bit longer because I don't want to burn myself. Um, but this is what I do. I usually get these little jars on Amazon and then make my little vanilla extract. So I use, sometimes make these to, to, to gift. Um, but you can see on the inside, you can see the vanilla uh, beans that are in there, these long uh, vanilla beans. So what I do is I just get the vanilla beans. Um, and there's this is, I believe this is three ounces and maybe it's three um, beans in there that I cut up um, and then just sort of score it, stick it in your bottle and add vodka to it. Um, and within six months, better to wait a year, you have vanilla extract. Um, and I have a friend who runs a cooking school in Santa Monica, and she always has a giant bottle of vodka. And she just she she has she teaches a lot of baking classes. She just sticks any vanilla um, that's left over from her baking. She sticks it in the vodka, and she just continues to top off the bottle of vodka. So she always has fresh vanilla. Um, if you buy vanilla, it should really only have two ingredients: um, alcohol and um, and vanilla. Sometimes it has water. Sometimes they'll add sugar to it. Um, but it should really just be really good vanilla. It should just have those two um, ingredients. Um, so, and you know, it's amazing. Um, so I have my my powdered sugar, um, and I think they're cool enough to handle now. So I have my little polvorones. Um, let me flip this over so that you can see what I'm doing. Because I know that we're I know that we're running. We're running out of, of time, but um, I'm just gonna stick them in here and just gently toss them. And this, you wanna do it to where they're still, you know, they're, they are um, still warm. You don't wanna burn yourself, but if you wait until they're too cool, it's really not gonna stick very well. Um, so, but that's it. It's so they're so simple and they're so pretty. Um, and as soon as these guys are over, you don't want to put too many in there because they are since they're still really warm. They're also very um, just gentle. So you want to treat them gently. I mean, how gorgeous are these little? They're so festive. Look at that. I know you shifted earlier. Um, can you repeat again where can folks buy Mexican vanilla beans? Oh, yes. Let me share. It's called Voladores. Um, so I will I will write down the the name. Well, actually, um if you don't if you don't mind, because it's it's um V-O-L-A-D-O-R-E-S. Um, and they are in Veracruz. The, the vanilla is from Veracruz. All vanilla is native to Veracruz, which is this um, state in eastern Mexico. It's on the coast. And um, Voladores is, is from there. And they actually ship from the U.S. So if you order them, you could go on their website. They also have an Etsy page. Um, and they ship very quickly. There's also another um, place in, in Mexico that's wonderful. That's called Go. That Goya, no, or or Goyo, Gall oh God, I can't remember. I think it's. Hold on, I have some vanilla here from them. Some some vanilla. Hold on, let me. Um, I'll tell you exactly what it's called. Um, when I open, I can open the pantry. I'm gonna rinse my hands again. So those cookies are done. And I'm just gonna put them on this platter. Um, while I wait for the for the other cookies so that I can put the, the jam and the other cookies. But look how beautiful this looks. Let me just flip this over so that you could see. So pretty. So elegant too. And then just so, um, so, 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 so easy to make. I'm gonna put up my little crescent moons on the side here. And I'm just going to move this aside. 
And I want to show you the vanilla that I'm talking about. So I went to last year, last spring, I went to, let me just open this. It's called Guy. Yeah, sorry. So I got the little, um, the vanilla, the just the, the seeds. And I usually, when I make flan, I'll put it in there. If I make a van, uh, vanilla ice cream, I'll put this in there. Um, and this is wonderful. So and they 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 are trying to sort of bring back this industry. It's a wonderful company. They've been around since 1873, and it's um it's been in the same family since the 19th century. And the person that runs it now is is a woman. So it's the it's the first vanilla you know plantation that's owned by uh, that's run by a woman. It's very 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 small. Um, I'm gonna check my cookies just because of just because of the time. And I'm just going to do a little, just squish them a little bit. I just want you to see, it probably still needs a little bit more time, but um, I want you to, I'm going to, I'm just going to squish them right now. Um, let me flip the camera. So you see none of them have, uh, I'm just going to basically do that. Since they don't have, so these you want to, to make the cookies a little bit small, because um, once you squish them, they spread out and they, um, it's a, it's a, it's a generous sized cookie. So I'm, I'm going to stick these back in the oven a little bit longer. So this you want to, um, how are we doing on time? Let me see, Adriana. And should yes, I stick these back in the oven? oven? Sorry? Yes, seven minutes left. Seven minutes. Okay, so I'm going to stick them in for just a couple more minutes, um, and then we will we'll just fill it by. I'm just going to stick them in for three more minutes, just to give it a little bit more time because they're still very raw. But if not, um, you get a sense of you know what what they should look at like. But I'm going to just stick them in for just just give them a little bit more time. Um, does anybody have any questions or any any comments or anything? while we wait for our for our cookies um, to, to finish. How pretty are these little wedding cookies though? Any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. um, that was the eight minutes, mm -hmm. Alexa, stop. So I'm just gonna um, just give it a few more minutes. I think it's gonna need, just one second. It's about another five minutes. Um, let me see. Um, I see a question come in, but if um, if you freeze the dough, how? Um, oh, let me show the guy. Up. How? Um, I would probably cook them from frozen. Does anybody have any other? I've never frozen them, so I would probably cook them from frozen. This is a little bad, guy. Yeah. And uh, my as you're sharing that, um, I do just want to um, make a note that AARP does not endorse any business. This is just merely information that my dad is sharing. I wanted to share that. Absolutely, yeah, as absolutely. So yeah, it's just um, I love to to just support these you know small businesses. But yes, it it's. I don't work for them for for Mexican vanilla either. I just love, and I've also gotten you know Madagascar vanilla bags of Madagascar vanilla. Um, it's actually quite different. Madagascar vanilla um, is much more flavorful. It's much stronger. Mexican vanilla is very very mild. Um, so if you get both, it's interesting to to taste the the the, the difference. Um, so let's see. Oh. Somebody, the vanilla side, difference between pompona and planiforme. They're just different, um, different plants, different vanilla plants. Um, and they're all now the vanilla is, is um, what is it called? It, it, all of the vanilla beans have to be harvested from front, uh, from by hand, which is also why it's so expensive. Um, but they're just different, different plants. Some of them make a larger vanilla bean than than others. Oh yes, thank you, uh, Rosangela, for for sharing the the website. Um, cool. Before I yes, they should be. Um, so sorry, I'm looking. 
Um, you don't want to ferment the, the the vanilla. You you want to buy already the vanilla the vanilla beans. Um, you don't really have to do anything to that. You mean or or do you mean like sticking it in the in the alcohol? Um, you want to it, it lasts forever. It's never going to go bad. Um, it takes about six months to get some flavor, but a full year to get like full on flavor. Um, so sifting the flour. I never sift the flour. I just find it a, a, just an extra step. I I, I never uh, sift the flour, uh, but some people actually swear by sifting the flour. Um, should the cool should the cookies be cool before making before filling them? They should be cool, um, but only in the for the sake of of time. I am going to fill a couple of cookies um, just so that you could get a sense. But you do want to make sure that these are. You know, cooked all the way. This, these are still pretty soft, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna demo a couple. Um, let me just get a little, a separate little plate, um, just to kind of. I think you can probably imagine what they're gonna look like, but I just want to show. Let me grab a little, little offset spatula. Um, so it'll get. You know, you you want them to be. This is. These are still quite soft. I can squish it. Um, but I'm just gonna fill a couple of them. And I'm gonna stick the rest of them back in the oven. And I wanna make sure that I don't that I don't forget to answer any of the of the questions, but let me just uh, flip it over. Any other questions? Uh, powdered sugar, I did not sip the, the powdered sugar. I didn't really sift anything, but it's probably not a bad idea because it was, I did notice that when I put it in, it was a little bit clumpy. Um, uh, keep it in the dark, Jennifer. Do you mean the vanilla? You could just keep it in the pantry. Yeah, it doesn't really have to be, you know, dark. Um, although sometimes when you buy the, the vanilla, the little bottles of vanilla, they're brown. Um, so it just kind of protects them. But if you just keep them in a pantry, that's totally fine. Um, let's see, Rita, frozen cookies. Um, can the person who said that had frozen the cookies first let us know when they were frozen before or after rolling? Okay. Layer them with wax paper because she did roll them in powdered sugar before freezing. Oh, interesting. Oh, Rita, yes, keep them in the in the in the in the what do you call it? Yeah, keep them in a in a pantry. In the pantry, yes, and shake them a couple of times a week, and it's just amazing. Um, we are close to very close to time. I wasn't sure if you were going to demonstrate the jam. How did yes. the so jam? these are the two little um the two little guys, and it looks like we lost connection with um the phone. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So yeah, so you basically you have the cookies once they're completely um once they're cooked. Um, and all you want to do is just take your favorite jam. Here's a little. Uh, you can do that. And we have a question. Um, if you can repeat, please, um, if the cookies should be cool before putting in the jam. You, you should. Share. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they should definitely. But that's it. That's it. And you want to make sure that they are, you know, completely cooked also before putting the jam. You don't want to, you know, put the jam and then finish cooking them like I'm like I just did now. I just wanted to demo. Um, so you want to make sure that the that the cookies are completely, completely cooked. Anything else? But just so much um, gratitude. It looks like it's there. It's coming from different folks. Um, they said thank you and how this workshop has been Fantastic. Uh, I know we are close to uh, time. So if you, um, before we wrap up, if you can share um, the cookies that you made so we can snap a photo. Yes, for sure. Let me put, pass these over um, and I will stick these over here. Thank you all so much for, um, for joining. I know you wanted to have the AARP logo in there. So <laughs> that works. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, Maite, it has Thank been you. a pleasure as always. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, um, Priscilla and Adriana and just everybody. And happy holidays, everybody. Thank you so much. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you, Maite. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.